Okay, so to analyze some of these systems of differential equations, or these coupled uh, autonomous differential equations, we'll have to use what's called null clines to find the equilibrium points. Okay, so an equilibrium for a coupled system, right? So a coupled system dx dt equals f of x and y, dy dt equals g of x, y. An equilibrium point is not only a place where one derivative is zero, right? It has to be a place where both derivatives are zero, right? Because in order for the system to not change anymore, it's not enough for only one variable to stop changing because if dx dt is zero, then dy dt could still change, which would then change dx dt and push you away from the equilibrium point, right? So to find the equilibrium point, we need a point x star, y star, where both of these are zero, right? Where both f of x star, y star equals zero and g of x star, y star equals zero, right? Since the first one implies that there's no change in x, the second one implies there's no change in y, right? So here this implies no change in x, no change in y, and then we're at an equilibrium point, right? So neither variable is changing in time at this point, okay? But solving for a place where two functions are zero is harder than solving for a place where only one function is, hard, is uh, zero, okay? So we'd have to solve the system, right? f of x, y, equals zero and g of x, y equals zero, which can typically be uh, quite difficult, right? It's not as easy as just finding the zero of one function. Now we kind of have to look for where uh, both of them are zero together, right? So algebraically, this can be kind of tricky depending on the equations, but a surefire way to always do it would be to evaluate it graphically, right? Where we could plot um, x versus y, right? We could plot x and y, and we could plot maybe f of x, y might look like this, right? And we could plot g of x, y, sorry, this is f of x, y equals zero, and g of x, y in a different color, maybe, maybe g of x, y is just a straight line or something, right? So this is g of x, y equals zero, and then equilibrium point, would be an intersection. Let me just grab a different color. So equilibrium at intersection of these two things, okay? And so each of these curves is what's called a null cline, uh, which is just a fancy word for a curve on which that function is zero, right? So this would be the x null cline and the y null client in blue. Okay, y null client, right? So x null client being the, you know, the curve of points in the x, y plane where this function is zero because that means that dx dt is equal to zero. Okay, whereas the y null client is the set of points where g of x, y is zero because that's where dy dt is zero and you have no change in y. And then where these two null clines intersect is your equilibrium point. Okay, so let's do an example and, and then maybe hopefully this will make a little more sense. Okay, so let's go on to uh, this first example we talked about in the previous video, right? This predator prey model. And instead of having A, B, C, D, I'm gonna put uh, values on the different parameters. Okay, so we recall we had the prey was given by dx dt, right? And this has its own natural growth rate. We'll call it uh, one times x. And then the predation we'll say is 0 0.001 for the value of that predation term times x, y, right? So interaction between predator, uh, sorry, a predator in y and a prey in x at a rate 0 0.001, you know, that's how many get eaten. 
up over time. And then the predators, right, they'll be governed by dy dt. And so I'm just giving values to uh, those parameters that were there last time. So it's going to have, uh, it's actually going to increase at this rate, right? So it's going to have plus 0 0.001 xy. So this is the growth due to predation, right? So in this case, uh, you know, every successful hunt results in kind of a per capita increase in your population, right? So if you if you eat someone, then you can survive and reproduce is kind of what this is saying. And then it has natural death rate of minus one times y, okay? So I've just given uh, values uh, to the previous uh, model where I just had a, b, c, d here. Now I have numbers instead, okay? And then we can think about finding the no clines and finding the equilibrium of this system, okay? So to start, we find the no clines first. This is kind of our first step to figure out the behavior of the system. Because it's worth noting that, um, you know, the separate integrate technique doesn't work on coupled autonomous differential equations. Finding, you know, a, an actual solution x of t versus y of t for a coupled system is, is quite complex, and we're not going to get into it in this class. But we will be able to kind of evaluate equilibria and kind of a, a substitute in for stability and kind of be able to evaluate trajectories in the phase plane uh, whereas maybe we can't find these equations exactly. Another way we could do this, uh, which we might do later, is Euler's method on a coupled system, and that will give you an approximate solution you know, most, in most cases. Um, but if we want to just kind of interpret what's going on in this problem, we'll start with the x and y null clients. Right? So let's start with the x null client. Okay, so the x null client is where dx dt which is this function f of x, y is zero, okay? So what does that mean? That means we set this left-hand side to zero equals x minus 0 0.001 x, y, okay? And we want to kind of factor this out and find all the x and y values, or maybe it's like a set of values where this is zero, right? So uh, a good way to do this is to start factoring first. So let's factor. So this becomes zero equals x times one minus 0 0.001 y. Okay, and then we can split this up into two, uh, basically two things make this zero, right? This gives us x equals zero as one set, right? If x is zero, it doesn't matter what y is, this whole thing will be equal to zero. Another way is for one minus 0 0.001 y, to equal zero, right? In this case, uh, it would also be zero no matter what x is, right? As long as this equation is satisfied, then dx dt will be zero. So then uh, to get this into a form that's just, you know, y equals something, we'll just mess around with it a little bit, right? So let's move that over to the right. We get one equals 0 0.001y. Divide by 0 0.001, we get y equals a thousand. Okay, so then we have two x null clients, x equals zero and y equals a thousand, right? So if I was to plot these in the phase plane, and so uh, the phase plane is what I'm calling this x, y graph here. So x versus y, this is called the phase plane, right? So uh, before we had the phase line diagram where we plotted x versus dx dt, the phase plane diagram is where we plot x and y, the two variables for our coupled system. Okay, so let's plot these null clients. So we plot one at x equals zero. So that is um, the vertical axis here. So this is actually, oops. Let's make, let's do this in red. Why don't we? Just so we can see where it is. Right, so we're gonna make this in red and in red, these two null clients. So at x equals zero, that's a vertical line at x equals zero, right? And y equals a thousand, we'll say is up here. So this is y equals 1,000. So both of these along this line, dx dt is equal to zero, right? These are two different x null clients. Okay. So the next step is to find 
the y null clients. So the intersection between these two x null clients is just a place where dx dt is zero. It's not a place where both dx dt and dy dt are zero, right? So this intersection doesn't mean anything because they're the same kind of null client, right? Um, let's find the y null clients, right? So let's make that, we'll, we'll do this next and let's switch over. For some reason my buttons aren't working today. Okay, so now let's find the y null client. Sometimes there's more than one curve, sometimes there's only one. In this case, there will probably be two. So the y null client is where dy dt is equal to zero, right? So this is where dy dt, which is my function g of xy, which is uh, up here, it was plus 0 0.001 xy minus y. 0.001 xy minus y. And we're looking for this is equal to zero. Okay, so let's write that out. That says 0.001 xy minus y equals zero. So let's factor this, right? So this gives us 0 0.001 x minus one times y equals zero. Then we can split this up into two things, right? We can set this to zero and this one to zero. So when y equals zero, it doesn't matter what x is, this equation here will be zero, so that's a place where dy dt is zero. So this is one of the y null clients, right? So let's underline that in blue. The other y null client will be when this equation is zero. 0 0.001 x minus one equals zero. Let's move the one to the other side, divide by 0 0.001, and that gives us x equals 1,000, okay? So for this problem, they're, they're pretty symmetric. But that's just kind of a consequence of the parameters that I picked. It's not always going to be like this. Okay, so these are two y null clients, right? So these are both y null clients. So if we add them to our plot, we have now a y null client where uh, y is equal to zero. So that would be here. Oops. Okay, and the other null client is when y, sorry, where x is a thousand. Okay, so that would be about here, we'll say. So we'll say this is x equals a thousand, right? And both of these are places where dy dt is equal to zero, the y null clients. Okay, and now we are finally at a point where we can find those equilibriums. Right, so the equilibria are the intersections of the x and the y null clients because that's a place where both dx dt and dy dt is zero, right? A place where there's no change in x or y. So we look at all the intersection points between the two kinds, right? So I look for a red and blue crossing, red and blue crossing. So I have an equilibrium here and an equilibrium there. These intersections are not equilibrium points because here, dy dt is not zero, only dx dt is zero. And over here, only dy dt is zero. dx dt is not zero. So there's no change in y, but there's change in x. Over here, there's no change in x, but there's change in y, okay? So our two equilibrium points are at these two intersections, right? So for this problem, we can read them off the graph. Uh, otherwise, we might have to kind of find these algebraically. So one is gonna be at zero, zero, the others at 1,000, 1,000, okay? And those are the two equilibrium points of our system, right? We can check the equilibria. You don't have to do this, but I'll just kind of go over this just so we can kind of go over what it means to be an equilibrium point just one more time, right? So let's check zero, zero. Well, what that means is that dx dt, which is go back to this function, x minus 0 0.001 xy, 0 0.001 xy, and dy dt is uh, 0 0.001 xy minus y. So if I plug in my 0 0.00, right? So this is my function f of xy. This is my function g of xy. So at 0, 0, 
right? This is zero minus 0 0.001, zero times zero, which is zero. Okay, so that's an equilibrium point because if I plug it in, I get dx dt at this point, right? So you might be able to write dx dt at the point zero, zero with that kind of uh, line and then evaluation notation like that, right? So dx dt, the rate of change of x at the point zero, zero, which is f at zero, zero is zero, right? So that's a place where there's no change in x, right? So no change in x, and then if we check dy dt at this point, right, that's g at 0, 0, which is going to be 0 0.0010 0 0 times 0 minus 0, which again is also 0, right, so there's no change in x or y. All right, if we check the other equilibrium point, we'll find the same thing, right, so let's check point 1000 1000 what do we get well dx dt at this point 1000 1000 is f at a thousand a thousand is going to be um, 1000 minus 0 0.0001 1000 times 1000 Okay, and so this becomes 1,000 point zeros. Uh, I made too many zeros here. This is just three zeros and a one. 0 0.001 times 1,000 is equal to one. So this becomes one times 1,000. So I have 1,000 minus 1,000, which is zero, right? So there's no change in X at this equilibrium point. And if I check the change in Y, right? So let's do dy dt. At this point, 1,000, 1,000, right? That's G of 1,000, 1,000, which is 0 0.001, 1,000 times 1,000 minus 1,000. Again, this becomes 1 times 1,000 minus 1,000, which gives us 0, right? So there's no change in X or Y at the point 1,000, 1,000. So it is an equilibrium point, okay? So both of these are places where there is no change in x or y, right? So this is a place where the predators and preys are kind of perfectly balanced, right? So the zero, zero case is when they're both dead, right? They're both completely extinct. The 1,000, 1,000 case is a place where there's some sizable number of prey, some sizable number of predators, and kind of this predation term is balanced with the growth rate, and this predation term is balanced with its death rate. And so it's kind of just sitting at an equilibrium. So Predators are catching lots of prey, uh, but the prey are able to replace it by natural growth. And the predators aren't just increasing forever because they have this natural death rate. So it's a nice uh, equilibrium point. Whether or not it's stable and whether trajectories are going to move you know, from the extinction state towards this kind of uh, balanced population level, or whether it's gonna move in the other direction, right? If you stay off of this population, this 1,000, 1,000, and move towards the extinction case, uh, you know, in that case, it'd be like there's some sort of problem with the system where they won't survive unless they're exactly at this equilibrium point, which might not be good for ecological management or whatnot. Um, and so kind of understanding, you know, what do solutions look like between these two equilibrium points is kind of where we want to go next, right? But just calculating these equilibrium points is, is a bit more difficult than in the one dimensional case. And the stability in this kind of case is going to be even a lot more complex. So we won't even find like a condition for stability. For these problems, we'll look more at what do the uh, rates dx dt and dy dt, you know, what direction are things moving in the different quadrants kind of cut up by this null Klein picture. So that's where we'll go kind of in the future. But for now, we'll just, you know, work on finding these null Kleins, right? So finding the curves. So here our curves were just straight lines, right? But you could easily have it, you know, look like a picture like this. So finding a curve where your x, change in x is zero, find a curve where your change in y is zero, their intersection will be equilibrium points, right? And so kind of identifying these is kind of our first task to understanding these coupled autonomous differential equations, all right?